National Dishes of the Kazakhs is a historical guide for studying the past of the nomadic people. National dishes are evidences that have come down to our times from antiquity, which combine lifestyle and etiquette of entire civilizations. Studying the peculiarities of the gastronomic predilection of one or another people, one can find out how people lived, what they did, how they made contact with other civilizations. The history of Kazakh cuisine is distinguished by a peculiar technology of cooking, storing and consuming food. But how people came up with these recipes? What of the dishes of the nomads was forgotten? And how can we revive the recipes that went into oblivion? This method is little known at the present time. However, many people store meat that way. How Kazakh people invented recipes that now occupy an honorable place on the tables of Kazakhstan? The cuisine of any nation is formed on the basis of the economic way of life. What was the nomadic etiquette? Because it was considered a bad omen and it even was forbidden. The entree, the second course, and what's for a dessert? During the time of the Golden Horde, they emphasized that the Turks did not like sweets, did not like sugar. Watch all this right now. С давних пор основной чертой казахского народа было, конечно же, гостеприимство. For a long time, hospitality was the main feature of the Kazakh people. A traveler, regardless of his origin and religion, was at first seated at the Dastarkhan, a table full of treats. As noted by many travelers who came to the country of the boundless steppes, it was impossible to leave a Kazakh house with an empty belly. But how did this or that dish appear, and what are the other secrets of ancient nomad recipes? My name is Andrei Slozhin. It is the Time Puzzle, and today's episode is going to be the most delicious. According to scientists, a huge impetus for the development of mankind was the fact that primitive people stopped eating raw food and began to cook it. And it began about two million years ago. Moreover, scientists believe that the rejection of raw food did not occur deliberately, but by chance. Most likely, the ancient people ate the meat of animals and died during the fires. Conscious heat, treatment of animal meat for food occurred much later. Так, например, британский антрополог Крис Стрингер считает, что люди осознанно начали готовить. For example, the British anthropologist Chris Stringer believes that people began to consciously cook meat only after they had mastered the fire, and it happened 400,000 years ago. It turned out that about one and a half million years it took people to realize that they can cook meat without lightning or fire. Our ancestors learned to fry meat for a long time. But let's leave such a distant past and find out when they started cooking in Kazakhstan. Doctor of Historical Sciences Professor Almet Toktabai told us about this. Kazakhs have been breeding sheep, goats, horses, cows and camels for more than 15,000 years. In all these years, the nomads consumed meat, drank milk. Therefore, the basis of the national cuisine is meat. That is, red food and milk, which is white food. Kazakh's favorite food is meat. Meat began to be consumed long before the Bronze Age. The first animals that were bred by the ancestors of modern Kazakhs were sheep and goats. Later, they began to keep horses and camels. The main evidence for this was discovered by archaeologists during the excavations of the sites of the people of the Botai culture. 
Кукшта облысында ботайз деген жерде мына жылқының жүз мұндаған сиогы шықты. As you heard, a barrow with hundreds of thousands of forest bones was found in the area of Botai in the Akmal region. Apparently, the ancient inhabitants of this region were the first who began to tame and breed horses. There, they also began to find deep pits where they once kept meat. The meat was wrapped in skins and placed in these pits. And the meat did not lose freshness for a long time. Such pits are popularly called kamba. However, there was another version of the preservation of meat which is now forgotten. Chef Manas Skak told us about it. In general, Kazakh cuisine has many exotic dishes for us. Many people believe that our national cuisine is not so rich. That is a mistake. For example, nomadic Kazakhs already in ancient times knew many ways to store raw meat without any refrigerators and accessories, and later they cooked various delicacies from meat. Few people know how to store meat in plain flour. For example, fresh meat was pre-salted, dried for two, three days, and then stored in ordinary flour for a couple of years. The quality of the meat does not suffer at all. On the contrary, it becomes even tastier. I myself cooked dishes from such meat. However, this method of storage cannot be called ancient. Wheat flour became widespread in the Kazakh steppes thanks to the Silk Road. They made dough from flour, rolled it out, and added to boiled meat. This is how one of the main brands of Kazakh cuisine, Bashparmak, appeared. But initially, it didn't have any dough in its composition. So familiar and beloved by all Bashparmak with dough, in ancient times was considered a dish for the poor. The historian Radik Demir Galiev told us about this. The current Beshparmak, what we call Beshparmak, is a dish that actually appeared in the 19th century, in connection with the transition of the Kazakhs to a sedentary and semi-sedentary lifestyles. There was not so much cattle already available, cattle had to be protected. Therefore, at first, the poor naturally began to roll out the dough, which they added to meat in order to save it more economically. However, nomads included cereals in their diets long before the mass distribution of wheat in Kazakhstan. Those who were engaged in farming grew the most popular and favorite grass in those days. The very first and most common cereal crop was millet. The reason is that millet ripened for 12 weeks. It was worth planting it, and after three months, it matured. Therefore, millet was very popular among the Kazakh people. The process of introducing flour products into the national kitchen was fast. Nomads liked them. They began to bake flat cakes to make already familiar to us barsaks. And before that, by the way, they were made from other cereals. Gradually, Beshparmak with dough became more popular. And at that time, the name Beshparmak appeared. In fact, the name of the Kazakh national dish was given by other nations. Of course, in translation, it means five fingers because they ate it with their hands. However, the name came from other nations. According to linguists, there is nothing surprising in the fact that the name of a particular dish comes from other languages and is being established among the nation. So, for example, the worldwide popular borscht meat stew with the addition of beets, potatoes and cabbage initially meant something completely different. And it came from the Turks to the Slavic world. <laughs> For example, striped meat, 
Mongolian nomads called it Bors. Slavic peoples have borscht. This word is reflected in the saying, stripped back and tattered thighs. What is the point of the saying? This is a nomadic lifestyle. Nomads slaughtered cattle, cut meat into thin strips, salted and dried. Then these dried strips of meat are crushed, put into bags, attached to the saddle, and they are ready to go camping. Then during a halt, water is boiled. This dried mass is thrown there, and this is how the soup turns out. The Mongols have a bors. The Kazakhs have a borsalanganyet. The Slavs have a borsh. Coming up next, the most ancient recipes for cooking meat. По мнению историков, первым, что стали готовить древние люди, According to historians, the first dish that the ancient people began to prepare is roasted meat on the fire, or as we now call it, kebab. The method is quite simple. They made a fire, waited for the wood to burn through until burning hot coals were formed. Then the meat was strung on branches and roasted on these coals. Meat could just lay on the embers. The only downside of cooking this dish is that it was necessary to constantly ensure that the meat is not burned and must be turned over. The nomads did not have so much free time, so they came up with the following. Another example of this dish is sirne, which is cooked in the stomach. It is also called burme karin, kozi karin. But people forget about this method of cooking when the meat is buried in the ground. Nowadays we have a variety of different furnaces, there are tandoors. And in the old days, nomads put a young cattle's meat in its own stomach in the morning, buried in the ground, putting coal on it. And on the way back, already at noon, they ate ready-made sirne. Now, of course, we cook sirne in a modern way, and this method was forgotten. As many researchers say, this dish was a favorite of Genghis Khan. The method of cooking was almost identical, with only one small exception. The meat was wrapped not in the stomach, but in the skin of a ram. Also, before digging up this semi-finished product, Genghis Khan's cooks heated up smooth stones on the fire. They were thrown into the skin along with raw meat. And then all were put in a hole with hot coals. Coals were thrown from above, and then it all was covered with earth and set on fire. This dish was cooked for several hours and did not require the constant presence of a cook. Сейчас по этому рецепту готовят в Монголии, Азии, Бурятии и при Байкале. Now this recipe is used in Mongolia, Asia, Bratia and Baikal region. The meat stewed in such a way that is soft and easily separated from the bones. In addition, many cooks are convinced that the stones are a secret ingredient that gives an unusual taste to the meat. It is like a burning log, which is dipped in fish broth. In addition, the stones carried one more function, general healing. Before starting the meal, the Mongols passed these hot stones from hand to hand. It was a sacred process that, according to belief, was supposed to improve the health of eaters. Indeed, now modern science easily explains this effect of heat on certain points on a person's hands and that this has a positive effect on the state of the body. Mongols are not the only ones who believe that eating one or another food could have a positive effect on human health. So, for example, the Japanese believe that a little ungrounded food prolongs life. 
The Greeks added red grape wine to many meat dishes for the same purpose. In China, they used snakes to eat, of which they also made therapeutic tinctures. People who are involved in sport know how. People who do sports know how important protein is, and so if we evaluate Kazakh cuisine from this point of view, then there was a very high protein content. There were not so many carbohydrates, and those carbohydrates were complex. For example, millet. And Kazakh food contained a lot of fat in the traditional Kazakh society. When the appearance of the Kazakhs was described, everybody emphasized such an athletic build. That they were very strong physically. It was formed in traditional cuisine. Of course, horse meat occupies a special place in culinary medicine. This meat was considered the purest. Later, the benefit of horse meat was confirmed by nutritionists. So, for example, in order to digest other meat, on average, you need 10 to 15 hours. Horse meat is digested in just three. But not only horse meat was considered a medical food. In the national cuisine, there are dishes from lamb which are able to return even male power. Another example of a remarkable national dish is the orme tostik. The stocking is lamb breast braided by sheep's intestines. You can cook both in steam and in broth. In general, breast meat is worth special mention. Kazakhs used to treat their son-in-law with fat fat from a breast. When the groom's family came for the bride, the older daughters-in-law treated with uh, brisket and uh, received a reward. This rite has its deep meaning. It symbolizes the hope that the young family would have a healthy offspring. Fat is useful for the male genitourinary system. This is a guarantee of good health of men. A healthy man will have healthy offspring. That's how this national dish was prepared and served to the suitors. Although meat was the main diet, the Kazakhs willingly used veggies in the preparation of food. As a rule, women and children were engaged in the collection of such additives. A member of the restaurateurs' club of Kazakhstan, Gulnara Totibayeva, told us all about it. A lot of steppe grasses were used. They were looking for those herbs that could, as they say, pull out a cold. Uh, give strength to a nomad, or in order to give to nursing mom, so she had milk. And there were a lot of such dishes that were directly prepared just for a certain person in the family. Wintering of the Kazakhs, they were located near the cities, with villages, and therefore everything that was produced there—the same watermelons, melons, vegetables, and some other fruits—all this was included in Kazakh diet, seasonally, so to speak. It was quite familiar. On the internet and other media, there are many theories that Kazakhstan is the birthplace of all apples on earth. However, when studying this version in detail, a British scientist at Oxford University, Barry Juniper, found that apples grown in Kazakhstan on the border with China have similar genes, only with the British Granny Smith and Cox Orange pippins. He wrote about this in his book, The History of Apples. However, in contrast to the opinion of the scientist, there are versions of alternative historians and researchers. They believe that Kazakhstan was the birthplace of all apples in the world. After all, the Kazakh word "alma," which means apple, also can be translated as "don't take it." From the words "al," take it, and "ma," is a negative particle. Thus, alternative historians came to the conclusion that the paradise where the first people lived and the forbidden fruit that grew in this garden, described in many religious books, it was in the country of the boundless steppes and high mountains. However, the apple, in spite of this interpretation, was never a forbidden fruit for the Kazakhs. Region Semerich was famous not only for the apple. 
The region of the Seven Rivers became famous not only because of apples. So many researchers believe that on the banks of Seven Rivers, nomads came up with another dish that is now popular almost all over the world: cocktail, hot smoked fish. Of course, in the world of cooking, there are many similar recipes for cooking fish in this way. This is a topic for a separate episode. However, it is this dish that destroys another stereotype about the Kazakh cuisine, namely, nomads did not eat fish. It is safe to say that our ancestors have consumed smoked, dried, fried fish for a long time. In the waters of Kazakhstan, there is a variety of fish species. So there are enough fish dishes at our kitchen too. All types of fish that live in the waters of the country have been represented in the national cuisine since time immemorial. Fish was included in the main ration of those nomads who lived in the coastal areas and on the banks of the Ili, Ural, Irtish, and other rivers. Along with Beshpermak with red meat, the Kazakhs who lived on the banks of the Volga and the Caspian Sea made it from sturgeon. Until now, these dishes can be tasted by visiting the city of Aktau and Atarau in Kazakhstan or Astrakhan in Russia. Of course, plant food was also present in the diet of the nomadic Kazakhs. For example, such ordinary berries as strawberries, black and red currants. In Semirechia, the Kazakhs ate mostly wild apples. They collected them cut and dried. Also, people used to eat the root of the grass called bek. It looks like a potato. It grows mainly in the highlands. During the floods in the flooded area, another grass appeared on the surface of the Irtish, which had edible nuts called quadrangles. Children loved them. The method of collecting these nuts is also peculiar. A dog was thrown into the water, to the wall of which these fruits stuck. Then they were collected, dried, and pricked. The next type of edible plant is sarana, a wild-grown onion. They also consumed young shoots of reeds, also quite tasty food. Coming up next, Table Taboos of the Kazakhs. Etiquette developed with the development of society and with the creation of various recipes of dishes, so there was a huge amount of cutlery for various treats. There were also rules about how to behave at the table. It is believed that this happened in ancient Egypt. The etiquette was simple. You had to use cutlery, eat nice and quietly. And what rules of the meal were followed by the nomads? People like Yanushkevich, Pantusov, Veselovsky, they described the life of the Kazakhs in great detail. They paid a certain attention, naturally, to food, to the method of preparation, how people serve guests, how they receive guests, what traditions exist in different regions. 
For example, the researchers described that the Kazakhs did not make guests wait for the treat for a long time at the table for a treat. And before eating, the eldest of those sitting reads the prey bata, as he wishes various benefits to all those gathered. Travelers also talked about hygiene. Be sure to wash your hands after eating. Be sure to brush your teeth. Wherever you are, you can even break off a spring and brush your teeth. That is, this is no longer just a religion. It is already a culture, a culture of behavior. Basically, the Kazakhs ate with their hands since this method excluded the possibility of burning the mouth cavity. After all, the person who consumed food felt its temperature with his fingers. However, plates and cutlery were still available. This is evidenced by various archaeological finds made throughout the territory of Kazakhstan. But a far more important factor for the Kazakhs was not what to eat, but where and how. <laughs> For a long time, guests sit down at the table according to their age. Aksakal sit at the top of the table. The first criterion is age. Then comes status in society, the Khan, the Sultan, and so on. Head is served to the honored guest. The head of the ram already boiled was presented to honored guests, but only to those whose parents were already dead, because it was considered a bad omen. And even that was forbidden. And who are the honored guests? These are mostly elderly people, Aksakals. This long tradition of meat distribution has reached our days. Conventionally, it can be divided into three types, honorable, medium, and small. In the first case, they put lamb head and meat with a pelvic bone to the elders. In the second, meat from a shin and tibia bone to people who are younger than axicals, but also enjoys high respect. In the third case, all the remaining meat, as a rule, was given to young people. Great importance was attached to the process of separating a sheep's head and distributing small pieces of meat to all those present with wishes from respected old men. Given a lamb's head to the axical, a peculiar cross is carved on his forehead. People interpret this rite as follows. The vertical line is your path. The horizontal line is our path, and our paths crossed in this house. In fact, it is wrong. Our distant ancestors, Saki and Huns, worshipped the sun, which symbol was a cross. And so the cross was cut out on a lamb's head. A similar tradition of the separation of meat exists among many Turkic peoples. The custom is found in Kyrgyz, Turkmen, Altaians, Mongols, and many others. Also among these peoples, there is another similar dining tradition. The host should in no case be the first to finish the meal. This was considered disrespectful for the guests and was perceived as a sign that the owner was not happy with them. After the end of the meal, a meat dish with food remains was taken out of the room by the daughter-in-law or the mistress of the house. After that, the next stage of the feast began. Sweets and tea were carried to the table. In the middle of the 19th century, Russian merchants brought a lot of tea to the Kazakh steppe with the help of this drink to gain favor of the local population. Tea production in Russia was very developed. Nomads could give one horse for 15 packs of tea. Of course, one cannot say that there was no tea in the steppe before this time. It was brought through the Great Silk Road. The motherland of tea is China. The first mentions of this drink date back to the 6th century BC. The legend says that the first who tried this flavored drink was the progenitor of the entire Chinese nation, the divine farmer Shen Nun. After a hard day's work, he sat in the shade of the trees and boiled water to cook his dinner. 
But a sharp gust of wind threw a few leaves of tea to boiling water. Immediately the water turned brown and a pleasant aroma appeared. Shannon decided to try the resulting broth. Fatigue seemed to be lifted by hand. Since then, Shannon drank this fragrant and beautiful drink every day. In Europe, the tea was discovered at the beginning of the 16th century. The drink became so popular that by the 17th century there were practically no countries left where they would not drink tea. Various tea ceremonies appeared. The Kazakhs too had its own rule of drinking tea. It was important to pour a little drink into a piala. If it was filled to the brim, it meant that the hosts want the guests to leave quickly. Only a little amount of tea was poured, half of piala or even less. <laughs> At first they drank black tea without adding milk. They began to add milk later. They drank not much tea, a cup or two. The real tea boom in the steppe began with the development of trade relations with Russia. An integral attribute of any tea party is, of course, dessert. In the Kazakh cuisine, there are many sweets that were put on the table. Everyone loved them, children and adults. Sweets and tea finished the meal. There is a huge number of different recipes of Kazakh sweet dishes. The main ones are zhent, chak-chak and talkan. However, sweets did not immediately hit the taste. It took more than one century for dessert to take their place of honor on the tables of the Kazakhs. In the days of the Golden Horde, it was emphasized that the Turks did not like sweets, did not like sugar. It was not familiar to them. And when they tried some sweet dishes, they thought it was tasteless and unusual. As for national desserts, those are the same. Irimshik, which is produced from milk, and tar, which is produced from millet. It is very tasty. It fills the body with energy. Of course, they could drink tea for quite a long time. But nevertheless, the guests understood that they would soon need to leave. At the end of the tea party, one of the distinguished guests again spoke the words of blessing to all those who had gathered. He separately devoted his speech to the owners of the house. After that, everyone was asked to wash their hands. It was a sign that it was time to go home. Kazakhs have always loved to eat. Just think of toy celebrations which were carried out with a huge scale. In the steppe, daily food was not much different from the festive food. With only one difference, for the holidays they prepared dishes from the freshest products. If it was meat, then slaughtered young cattle. Freshly harvested wild honey was added to sweets. If it was huge, then several families collected products for it. How was the food for toy collected? In every owl, in every village, there were herds, naturally, and these herds, they were divided. For example, let's say now a three-year-old foal, they will slaughter it today, then a cow, and so on. It was all selected by a particular person, and when there were some big events, he would just say, take two horses, a camel, rams, from that herd, and so on. Alcoholic beverages were also an integral part of the feast at all times and in many countries around the world. The Greeks drank wine, the Japanese sake, the Vikings loved beer. In Russia, they drank med. The Nomans had kumis, a low alcoholic drink made from horse milk. Its intoxicating effect is so weak that in order to get drunk, you had to drink a lot of kumis. In addition to pleasant relaxation and good mood, kumis brought help to digestion, which was especially important after long, abundant meals. One of the most important holidays of the Kazakh was the first kumis holiday, when kumis was made. And it all turned into such festivals. The shubat was also appreciated, this is camel milk. And from sheep's milk, they made iron and various drinks. 
people used what they had. Much later, vodka appeared in the steppe. Merchants brought it along with flour to the steppe. An interesting fact is that, at first, only the nobility were allowed to drink this alcoholic beverage. How did vodka come to the Kazakh steppes? Representatives of the ruling elite began to drink vodka first. For example, Abul Khair Khan, who initiated the accession to the Russian Empire. In one of the letters to the Russian Empress, he asked to send a bucket of vodka. At that time, the standard bucket volume was 10 liters. The Empress replied that the Khan's request would be satisfied, and two buckets of vodka would be sent to him. It is clear from this that people from the ruling environment were the first to drink the vodka. The widespread distribution of alcohol in the steppe has progressed for quite some time. All because there were a number of laws that limited the sale of vodka to the local population. In Russia, it was forbidden to sell vodka to the Kazakhs. To acquire it, the nomad had to ask a representative out of another nationality, whether it be Russian, Tatar or Bashkir. This law has become a significant obstacle to the rapid spread of alcohol throughout the Kazakh steppe. How can we have a holiday without music and dance? Kazakhs have always been a musical people. Probably there was no such person in the steppe that could not play dombra, sing or dance. People had great fun during the toys. Among the songs and dances, there was another contest in which everyone wanted to participate, but not everyone was allowed to participate in it. Among the Kazakh people at various festivities and feasts, they staged competitions of meat eaters. For example, if an important person goes to another village for a feast, then he would bring with him a whole group of accompanying people. It included security, marksmen from bows, wrestlers, singers, musicians, speakers, and besides them, there was necessarily a so-called meshke, a glutton who ate meat. Eater was preparing for the feast. For example, in Tarbagatai, there lived a man named Mamrahan, a professional eater. A few days before the holiday, he drank a tincture of Alexandrian leaf. So he freed the stomach and intestines, cleansed the body of toxins. For this competition, a whole ram was slaughtered. The brisket was given to the owner of the cattle. The rest of the meat was cooked for a long time so that it was easily separated from the bones. The competitor had to eat everything and then drink this broth. Then he went to the river. Then he went to a river and lied on the shore. As a result, the skin released all fat from the body. There were a lot of such eaters in the steppe. But it is worth noting that there is a difference between the Kazakh eaters Meshke and ordinary gluttons. For example, this Mamur Han, after such a feast, fasted for nine days. If we compare the ancient and modern Kazakh cuisine, then there are no dramatic changes to it. Of course, it was modernized. While cooking, they began to add various seasonings and ways of storing ready-made food were simplified. However, the sacred significance and tradition of toy and lunches remained unchanged. The attitude of the Kazakhs to the guests has not changed because this is the main character trait of the people.
Even if you enter any Kazakh family for a minute, the first thing you do is sit down at the table and be treated. Уважительное отношение к гостям, разнообразные блюда, традиции. Respect for the guests, a variety of dishes, traditions of the feast eventually took shape, a ritual of hospitality, which is known far beyond the boundless step. Come to Kazakhstan and experience it yourself. My name is Andrei Slozhin. It was the Time Puzzle. See ya.